All right, so um, welcome back from spring break. Hope you guys had a great week off. Um, it's, it's always good to have a little break in the middle of the semester. Uh, so we're coming back today. We're going to continue with AutoCAD. I know you guys probably forgot everything we talked about last uh, or two weeks ago, but hey, it is what it is. We'll pick it up again today. Um, you got two handouts today. The first one is your assignment 105, which is actually an architectural design project. Um, and I think this is kind of interesting, even for those of you that are in industrial design, don't, don't uh, hang up the towel on me just yet, because really it's just a matter of scale. You're used to designing objects, you're going to design something a little bit bigger here, but it's still very much about um, uh, designing a, a product, so to speak. So uh, bear with me while we go through this, because I think you'll learn a lot in the process. Uh, we're going to work in AutoCAD to do your drawings. You have the, and I'm going to go through the full rundown of what is expected as part of it. Uh, and then today, as part of your exercise 118, you're actually going to be drawing your project. So there's a bit of crossover here. It's not one of those where I say, hey, guess what? You're going to work on your Charlie Harper, and you figure out how to do it on your own time. Uh, this is one where we will work on it in class together. Uh, and there's really a strategy there, because I want to teach you, rather than just giving you, like, for example, last week you guys did a floor plan. We could then do elevations of that floor plan. But it's not very exciting. You're just copying whatever I'm doing. And I'd rather have you think through it and come up with your own ideas. And, and rather than um, waste our time just you copying me, we're going to actually have you have some, some freedom here, which is a good thing. Um, so anyway, we're going to go through that today. I'm going to show you a few more commands. But most of it is repeat from last class, so it's more practice for you. Uh, those of you that are already uncomfortable in AutoCAD, that's great. You can breeze on uh, through this. We will continue going into elevations, uh, et cetera, and then we'll do paper space and model space going forward. So uh, we will build on this. So you're going to be working on this same file for exercise 118, 119, 120, and 121. So for the next two weeks, you're kind of going to be working on this. Um, so it's something that you want to put some time and effort into as you, as you work through it. So uh, in terms of the program for the cabin, um, this is, I pulled up the assignment 105. This is identical to your handout. The difference is that at the bottom, there is a zip file of site information. This gives you a little bit more um, context surrounding what we're building here. So if you download that, and we'll let it finish its, its download right now. I will introduce you to the site, and then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about what are the programmatic requirements of this uh, site. So let me go ahead and show this zip file in its folder. I'm going to extract. So I'll right click on it and say extract all. And there it is. And so inside of this zip file, I gave you two things. One is an AutoCAD file. We'll get to that in just a second. The other one is a KMZ file, which is a Google Earth file. If you double click on that KMZ file, it should open Google Earth. Which, of course, it's not. Let's try browsing to it. Um, Google.com slash Earth, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of those classic things. Whenever you try to demo stuff, it's always slow, right? <laughs> Apparently, we're stuck on 3.4 billion of 4.54 billion years of processing. All right. Uh, there's. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Let's skip the intro. OK. Uh, let me see if, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, bear with me. They move stuff around on me all the time here. Uh, OK, so if you click the little um, three lines at the top here, you can go to My Places. And then we should be able to add. Enable KML import and setting. God, you know, why they make this stuff so complicated. There we go. 
So apparently I have to, Im I have to enable the ability to import this file, which I did. And now we can import that file, which I downloaded. It was in my downloads folder. Sorry for the convoluted uh, access here. There it is. The advantage of this is that it's going to pinpoint exactly where our site actually is. So we'll give it a second to load up here. Still loading. Uh, anybody been to Yosemite before? Okay, if you haven't been, it's a good place to go visit. Uh, our site is here in the happy, it's right near the Happy Isle Nature Center. Um, this is one of those great times where I can give you a site that you could never actually build on. Uh, obviously, Yosemite is a natural, uh, national park, so you don't get to build there, but why not? Um, the reason that I picked this as a sample site for us and for this project is because there's lots of information about it online. And so you can find pictures, you can find lots of cross-referenced information, uh, so it's an easy one to kind of design around as opposed to picking a site where you can't visit. In an ideal world, we'd all go on a field trip and we go visit it. I would love to do that. Not going to happen. <laughs> so um, that, that is the way uh, of the cards. But it also gives us a little bit um, of a good context to work from. It also takes away and strips out a lot of other contextual site information. So if I picked, say, a site in, the, you know, in Pleasant Hill somewhere, there's a lot of other stuff going on. There's buildings near it, there's streets, there's whatever. Here, we're eliminating a bunch of site conditions. There's no buildings around, there's, there's no uh, you know, streets around it, there's no cars, there's nothing to design around. You just have this blank, naked piece of land. Uh, the other thing that's nice is it gives you a little bit of a slope. In this particular uh, site, and you'll see this a little bit later, there is some steepness on one side. There's a river that runs through the site, uh, and there's a fairly flat, spot over here uh, that a lot of you will end up building in. So a little bit more context just so you know where you are if you visited Yosemite before. Um, let's see if we can, they always move stuff around here. Where is, there we go. So there's our 3D view. Uh, this is Yosemite Valley here. Uh, this is Half Dome, kind of notable big uh, point. Anybody ever hiked Half Dome? It's awesome if you like hiking. But you won't be able to walk for like three days afterward. Um, anyway, actually, we were talking about Half Dome last night. My father-in-law was here, and he said all he wants for his 70th birthday is to hike Half Dome. We did it for his 60th birthday, and so that's all he wants for his 70th birthday. I don't know how my kids are going to make it. Anyway, um, so our building is not at the top of Half Dome. It's right down here in this flat area. If you were hiking Half Dome, you would walk up past the building site. You would walk around, and you'd come up, and you'd end up coming all the way up that way uh, to get to Half Dome. Anyway, our site is right down in here, so you can get a little bit of sense of where we are, and that's one of the advantages of Google Earth. Um, Downside is, of course, the pixelated trees and, and what have you. But you still get a, 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 a little bit of a sense of, of where we are and what we're looking at here. There is a river. The Merced River comes right through here. Uh, there is a little bit of a barn uh, slash building thing here. You can pretend that it's not there. Um, and in terms of context, I'm giving you a fairly good chunk of site. So you can locate your building wherever it is that you want on the site. Um, what else can I tell you about this? So you're going to get some up canyon winds uh, later in the in early morning. You're going to get up canyon. Later in the day, you're going to get down canyon. In terms of orientation, we can see our little bit of a compass here. Let me flip back up to 2D here. Uh, and let's see if we can't. There we go. Uh, so there it is on north. North is pointing up. So we're looking toward the north across Yosemite Valley, seeing those uh, mountains on the other side. Uh, that means we're going to get limited s direct sun. We're going to get sun at the high peak of the day, not so much early in the morning because it's going to be shielded by this ridge here. And later in the day, it's going to be shielded by this ridge. So just in terms of general lighting conditions, uh, big windows on the north side are always great, great even light. That happens to be the direction of your view. 
no coincidence that I set it up for you that way. Um, and so it gives you some, some idea of what's going on. I'd encourage you to spend a little bit of time uh, in Google Earth. Take a look at, and, and see. There's probably some way of turning on. That was not it. Definitely not it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yep, we're looking at somewhere else. No, I don't want to, to jump from place to place. OK, hold on. <laughs> I love it when they update. Let's go back. We're just flying all over the place right now. Let's go. No, we want to go back here. Stop taking me to Africa. Have I made you dizzy enough yet? <laughs> there we go. There we are. We're back. Nice. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, you can play around with this and have a look. And I will stop uh, clicking on things and randomly making us sick. Um, OK, so in terms of actually building, I've gone ahead and I've given you the site topography and the site itself. So we have the KMZ file so that you can see what's going on there in Google Earth. But then ultimately, when it comes down to drawing your building, we need to start with some topography. Uh, so if you double click this DWG file, which is an AutoCAD drawing, yes, we want to go ahead and open it in AutoCAD, and it'll open. This will pop up because I generated the terrain from um, Rhino. And so it's going to pop up saying, are you sure you want to open it? Yes, we do want to open it. And once it opens up, you will see that we have uh, a piece of terrain. This matches up to the, let me see here, let's go back to 2D and let's reset it so that north is straight up. There we go. For context, there's our building site. So we're looking down on it. That's the same view as looking down on it here. This is just the line drawing version of the terrain. So the low point here is right here. Each one of these contours is one foot. So it goes up by one foot each time. Uh, and so the river would go right through there. This tends to be, this flat area tends to be where people build. Though you do have some steepness here if you wanted to try to tackle some terrain, uh, it is there as well. Most people build in the flat part. If you're not comfortable with the terrain, just build flat. It's flat enough so that we can compensate for your building later on. Uh, and I will show you how to deal with that. Uh, when we're doing the drawing for those of you that are a little bit more uh, advanced in this. So when it comes to actually drawing your building, as I've written out in your assignment handout, and I'll flip over to that assignment handout here, there are some loose requirements uh, that I've put in there. Uh, first of all, we always start with program when we're doing a design project. And this is telling you a narrative about who you're designing for, et cetera. Uh, if you were designing for an actual, actual couple, they would be telling you this stuff. But in this scenario, I'm telling it to you. Uh, so you have two clients, a husband and a wife. They have no children. And they have requested the following for their cabin. They'd like two bedrooms. One is their bedroom. One is a guest bedroom, so they can have their friends come. The total of those two bedrooms is somewhere around 400 square feet in size. The living space with a fireplace and windows that, quote, capture the site. The worst thing that you could do is design a building in Yosemite and not take advantage of being in Yosemite. <laughs> okay? the, it's a good site. It's a loaded site. It's that way for a reason. Uh, they would like a kitchen. Oh, that's 200 square feet. They would like a kitchen that is open to living space of about 150 square feet. They'd like a dining space of another 150 square feet. And your maximum square footage for all of this together, recognizing that you may have to add things like hallways and, and whatever, is somewhere around 1,000 square feet. If you have any exterior spaces, like decks or patios, you can have as much of that as you want. So the building itself needs to be small. The outside space can be rather large. Now, it's going to look really funny if you have a 1,000 square foot house and you have 8,000 square feet of deck. Just telling you. Okay, So we're going to try to keep it reasonable in proportion. This is meant to be small. It's not meant to be big. And that's good because we need to concentrate on small level details. Notice that I'm only asking you for one bathroom, two bedrooms, one bathroom, one kitchen. Right? We're small. This is not a uh, you know elaborate estate with a you know thousand square foot kitchen and giant wolf you know twenty burner stoves in it. This is small. This is supposed to be small. Okay. So that's the program. If you need more detail or you have a question about the program, ask me. That's OK. 
it is meant to be loose for a reason. So you should have a lot of flexibility in this. This is kind of your, uh, a lot of you did 120, right, already? Didn't you have to design some kind of a building in there, like a cabin or a house or something along those lines, okay? So this is an evolution of that. We're getting a little bit more technical than that, but it's still relatively open-ended, okay? So we're gonna start here with part three. Oops, right there. Uh, this is the AutoCAD drawings of the floor plan. We're gonna work through that today. Then we'll eventually move into uh, drawings of elevations, and then finally uh, doing collage views and, and whatever. So we'll get to that stuff a little bit later on. All of this will end up being on a 24 by 36 sheet that you will plot out of the big printer in the back of this room, the plotter. That is one of the student learning outcomes is that you know how to print. So that is a graded part of this assignment. You have to turn it in so that I can check off that you were able to print. I will warn you right now that if you come in on the morning that this is due and you try to print, it won't work. I will also warn you that it'll probably take you three or four times to get it to print. Plotters are notoriously difficult. They just are. And it doesn't matter whether they're new or old or used or non-used or whatever, they just are difficult. Um, and so you have to kind of develop a love-hate relationship with the plotter. It's good, for, it's good because you need it, and it's really bad because it's annoying and you pull your hair out with it. Um, I will walk you through how to print. Um, the best ways, and I believe this one's working again. It wasn't last semester. Generally, the best way to print is to actually take the USB cord and plug it into the printer and, or into the computer and print directly to the printer as opposed to trying to go to go print and whatever. But of course, I didn't tell you that, okay? So just remember that. For those of you that have laptops, sometimes, and this is like real hush-hush, sometimes it's even better to plug it straight into your laptop and print from that um, because you'll have better luck installing the printer and having it work. Anyway, just FYI, we'll walk through that. I'll teach you how to do it when we get a little bit further along, but I want you to be aware that that is part of this. So you're gonna be doing it. I will grade the online version visually, but I will check off that you were able to do the print. So the print is part of the grade, okay? All of that is due uh, before class on Wednesday, April 24th. So it's still a ways out. We've got a ways to go on this one. Uh, so you're getting it early on. Uh, you will need to comment on it, uh, and you'll obviously turn in both the printed version and the online version. Okay, so we're going to move over here, and we're going to start working with our drawing today. And you notice here that I have some general guides, like two bedrooms and one bathroom for a total of 400 square feet. That doesn't mean it has to be exactly 400 square feet. It's just kind of a general guide to get you approximately there. Okay? Um, the other thing that's important is you have to start thinking about how large these spaces really are. So uh, typically, uh, for example, a bedroom, uh, a small end bedroom, is maybe 12 by 12. That would be 144 square feet. So if you did 12 by 12 and one bedroom, if you had a bathroom that was maybe uh, you know, 5 by 8, that's 40 square feet. Let's make it a little bit, let's make it a little bit more than that. Um, We'll round that to 200 square feet total. That gives you another 200 square feet. Um, anyway, you can kind of do the math of seeing these sizes. It does not mean that you're going to have, you know, giant bedrooms. The other thing that I, I am kind of assuming that you're aware of because you all took uh, 120 is that you don't want your bedroom to be 5 feet by 20 feet because your bed's not going to fit in there. So there's some reasonable scales. Uh, and the truth is there's actual reasons why you make buildings certain sizes and rooms certain sizes. If you go home and measure your bedroom, most more li especially if it's carpeted, more likely than not, one of the dimensions of your bedroom is less than 12 feet. Do you know why it's less than 12 feet? Because carpet comes in a roll that's 12 feet wide. So a good designer is always going to make sure that one width of your bedroom is 12 feet because you don't want to have to seam the carpet in the middle. So there's little details like that. You don't necessarily know that yet because you haven't gone through school long enough, and that's okay. Uh, but when we start thinking about our, our buildings, we have to start kind of working out our sizes. Now, we're starting in a way that's a little bit counterintuitive to the way I like to work and the way that I like to design, but I think it's easier early on to design in this way, and that is that you figure out general space ratios and you develop your floor plan first. In that scenario, you're thinking about area and you're tacking those pieces of area together. So if I was going to say, okay, 
I want a bedroom that is 12 by 12. I can start with a rectangle and I can say at 12 feet comma 12 feet and then enter. And there's my 12 foot by 12 foot bedroom. Notice that it's really small. That's okay. This is 1,000 feet by 1,000 feet, your site. So you've got plenty of site. Your building is going to end up being rather small. Okay. So there's a 12 foot by 12 foot. I might come in here and I might say, okay, you know what? I want one to be a little bit bigger. So this might be at 12 feet comma uh, 15 feet. There you go. Maybe that's the master. And I want my um, bathroom, let's say, at 5 feet comma 10 feet, like that. So I'm working out what these are. Now, if I want to double check what the area is, obviously I can multiply 12 by 12 and get 144 square feet. But AutoCAD actually has a feature built in that allows us to measure and also to calculate square footage. And it's available over here in our home ribbon under measure. The default measure is just length. So if I were to click on that, it would say, how long is it from here to here? Oh, it's 12 feet. But we can also, if you click the downward facing arrow here, we can calculate area. And so if you didn't want to find out how big something was by calculating and doing the math, you can say, OK, I've made it all the way around. I'll hit Enter. It's going to tell me that it's 144 square feet. So if I move these together, and I'm not saying that this is the right way to draw the floor plan just yet, but I could go in and I could measure. And I could say, OK, all of this together oops, is 374 square feet. So not bad. So that's close to my 400, which is what I was kind of working through. If I wanted the buildings to be a little bit larger, I could modify them. If I wanted this bedroom to be a little bit bigger, we could say, OK, let's make this bedroom the same size as that. And I could come back and I could double check my square footage and say, how close did I get? And there I am at 410. So still approximately correct. Does that make sense? So that's how you're going to double check. So what I would do if I were starting to work on this is I would set up what my general sizes are in these little squares. So maybe I need a kitchen uh, that was at. There's a kitchen, and a dining space was the same, so we'll just copy this. The living space, um, maybe like that. So I'm kind of making these general sizes. Then it's a matter of starting to think about how do I want these to be assembled. You know, do I want one bedroom? So like maybe like this. Let's move this down a little bit. Let me take this bathroom. Let me copy this. Actually, let me move it. And I'm using all the same commands that we used last time. Move, copy, rectangle, etc. Let me rotate. Take this one here. We'll move this one. Be like that. See how I'm starting to assemble this? And then I say, OK, well, this is my dining. This is my kitchen. Maybe this needs to go next to it. Maybe these two together need to be rotated so I can come up to rotate. And then maybe these guys here come over like that. And suddenly I'm starting to develop a floor plan. In this scenario, I have a kitchen. I have a dining room, I have a living room that joins, and then I have the two bedrooms and the bathroom attached, as an example. So I'm starting to play around with that. Now, I have the general square footages here, but I haven't started developing any of the actual walls or anything just yet. And so as I start to get this and, and put this together, it's going to be time to draw in where the thicknesses of my walls are using the offset command, for example. Um, I could just start with a brand new polyline, trace all the way around the outside.
like that. I could take that polyline. I could offset it. Remember, the offset command is right there, too. Uh, it was six inches. And you see how I could start to develop that. So there, obviously, there would need to be interior walls. You can't just have a line that divides the rooms unless it's completely open. So in this scenario, I might keep the island, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the kitchen, the dining room, and the living room might all be open. So I might not actually put these lines in there. They might stay open. But I might partition off the bedrooms and or the bathroom and put doors or, or whatever into that. So it's really it's up to you in terms of how this works. Um, for those of you that are feeling pretty comfortable with your design process, start thinking about what it would feel like inside the space. Uh, and I think that's one of the, the big challenges for early designers is that you get focused on square footages and uh, satisfying requirements, and you stop thinking about uh, what does it feel like to be in the space. And so when I'm designing something, I'm thinking about it in three dimensions. I'm always thinking about what would it be like if I was standing in this living room? What do I want it to feel like? Do I want it to have a vaulted ceiling? How tall should that ceiling be? So I'm thinking about it in another view, even though I'm drawing the floor plan. So in this scenario, I've already kind of thought through, what does it feel like to be in these spaces? How do they connect together? What should the ceiling feel like, et cetera? And so those are all things that you want to kind of play around with uh, as you create your space as well. So. Um, I say on, on the, your handout for 118, some of the, the tools that you might also want to experiment with. Fillet, chamfer, extend, mirror, and rotate. We did mirror, we did rotate. Uh, I'll talk through fillet, chamfer, and extend, just so you're aware of those. So sometimes you have two lines in space, like that. And, sorry, let me move this over here. And you want, nope, you want this line to get longer and come to meet that line. That's where an extend can be useful. Um, you can type in extend or it is available as one of these tools, but I never remember where it is. It's not stretch, it should be extend. But Oh, it's hidden underneath the trim. Thank you. I should have guessed that. Uh, so I, I'm, I always type extend. OK, so under extend, so select objects or select all. I'm going to select those two objects. Um, and I'll press Enter. And then when I hover over this object, you see how it, it gets longer and comes to meet that object. So extend is kind of the opposite of trim. In fact, if you held down Shift, it would trim off parts of your uh, piece in the same command. So I could do an extend, and if I held down shift, it would actually trim. So it's kind of the opposite of a trim. Uh, so that's an that's uh, extend. I'm going to back up here. The other thing that we can do is we can t connect two lines in space with an angled line or with a rounded line. And so a fillet, which is that first command that I, uh, that I wrote down there, connects two lines with a rounded arc. So if I did a fillet, it's available right here under fillet. It's going to ask me first what the radius of the arc should be. So I could say that I want my radius to be 2 feet, for example. And I could connect this line and that line with a nice 2 foot arc. Now there's a hidden trick here. And that is that if I wanted these two pieces to come together at a point, I can do a fillet. But instead of specifying the radius as 2 feet, I can specify the radius as 0. And it will actually connect those two lines together in a point, which is a trick that I use very frequently in AutoCAD. So I have two lines, and I just want them to come together and meet. I can do a fillet with a radius of 0, and they'll come together at a nice corner. The other option is chamfer. It's hidden underneath fillet. And the difference here is that it's going to do a little uh, angle. And instead of doing this on those two lines in space, I'm going to do it on two lines that are orthogonal because it'll help you to see it a little bit better. So I have those two lines here. I'm going to choose chamfer. And when I do that and I look at my command line, it's going to ask me for the distance. And this is where I'm saying how much in the angle. So if I did one foot 
Next one will also be one foot. And then when I click on this and this, it will connect them together with an angle. So just another option uh, should you want to do that on one of your corners. So fillet, chamfer, extend, mirror, rotate. When you're done for today, you're going to give me a screen capture or print to JPEG like you did last class. Either way is, is perfectly fine with me. Uh, if you run into trouble with that, let me know. Today is really about working and trying to develop your floor plan. Think through it. Take the time to get a good floor plan. If you don't spend a lot of time here and you just rush through it, your building will reflect it down the road. So take your time now. Really think about it, and you'll get a better building. The other thing is you don't have to feel like this is the way it has to be forever. So if you, if you design it and then you wake up on Wednesday morning and you say, you know what, I want to change it or I want to move that bedroom, that's OK. That's part of the design process. It's something that we're all very used to doing uh, and happens <laughs> quite frequently. OK, so I'm going to give you the rest of the time today to work. And then make sure when you're done that you actually save your AutoCAD file. So I'll come up here to AutoCAD. I'm going to click on the Save icon. Uh, actually, I want to save as because it was the topo file. So here it is, save as. I'm going to make sure I put it on my flash drive into today's folder. It's going to save as an AutoCAD DWG file, which is what we need it to save as. That way you can come back and you can edit it a little bit later on uh, and work with it the next couple classes. Are there any questions? No? OK, I'll let you guys start working. <laughs>